Hello everyone, I'm Caro, the Mental Traveler. Welcome to my channel and to this video where I will be reviewing the story of The Scarlet Letter. I'll be talking about the book and also about the 1985 movie adaptation. The novel was published in 1850 and its author is Nathaniel Hawthorne and The Scarlet Letter is considered by many to be his best work. A lot of famous authors like Henry James and Virginia Woolf and Henry Melville think that Hawthorne was one of the best American writers that the United States has ever produced. And as to the film, there have been a lot of movies adaptations of The Scarlet Letter, but as I said, I'm only going to be talking about the one that came out in 1995 that's directed by Ronald Joe, and it starts Demi Moore, Gary Oldman, Robert Duvall, and Joan Plowright. I should tell you though that this film adaptation is not loved by many. It received a lot of criticism when it was first released. Still, I'll be mentioning why I'm talking about this particular film adaptation of The Scarlet Letter later, but I should tell you right now though that this movie isn't that much of a movie adaptation. It's more like a free really adapted film based on the characters of The Scarlet Letter. But it has a special place in my heart, it introduced me to the storyline and it has Gary Oldman, who was my major crush when I was a teenager. In any case, this video will be spoiler free. There's just this tiny little thing that I mentioned right towards the end that could be considered like spoiler material, but I'll warn you when I am about to say it. So let's begin, I hope you enjoy it. This is a tale of romance, a historical fiction set in the 17th century in Boston, Massachusetts. At this particular time, Puritans and other British migrants were settling around the New World, establishing all of these colonies from scratch, and in order to do this, they had to create these really strict laws in an attempt to keep peace among the people. For example, if a woman behaved strangely back then, if she got drunk, she would probably be accused of being a witch. In any case, the story begins when Hester Prynne is released from prison. She's a young, beautiful widow who's had a child outside wedlock and the town's elders intend to set an example of her so that no other woman commits adultery and in order to do this they order her to wear a scarlet letter A that stands for adultery till the end of her days on her clothes but as to the man who sired Hester's child she will not reveal his identity because she doesn't want him to be hanged because since he slept with her when she was a married woman he will be hanged to set an example to other men who wanna sleep with other people's wives and the scarlet letter covers the first years of Hester's baby's life and it also shows these sort of flashbacks into the main character's histories and the book focuses on the way Hester has to learn to live this lonely life away from society when she begins to wear the scarlet letter sort of brands her as an outcast because in this process she becomes a different woman we also learn as the story goes along who the father of Hester's baby is and we see the way he copes with having his identity hidden from the village while Hester bears all the shame of the affair that they had. To. And we also get to meet this elderly physician who has strong links to the main characters and who is not whom he claims to be. In the end, the novel deals with issues like sin, guilt, repentance, atonement and the strict Puritan society of Boston's early years. I give this novel a 4 out of 5 stars rating because even though it's a beautifully crafted storyline and Hawthorne writes these amazing passages at times, I would have preferred it a lot more if the story had shown how Hester came to get involved in this adulterous affair rather than just reading the aftermath of it. But that's just me. I get that showing how the characters fell in love and succumbed to this illicit passion wasn't the message that the author wanted to portray in the novel. Rather, I think that Nathaniel Hawthorne wanted to address other issues, like I mentioned seeing a tone to guilt and that's why he shows how the scarlet letter changes Hester and the effects that the letter has on the man who sired Hester's baby among other things. I also give it a 4 because there were times when I must admit I found the story a little bit tedious but I do recognize it's a great classic and it's far superior to the 1995 movie version that I'll soon be talking about but also just as I found some bits boring in the novel I also found others to be really moving. For example there are about three chapters at the end of the novel where Hester is in the woods and and she finally stops controlling herself and speaks out her mind and lets her emotions be shown and run free. And after having her for seven years be the complete opposite, I found that these chapters were not only refreshing but very liberating to her character. And another point, I knew before I read the novel the way the story ended, so I knew who sired Hester's baby. So despite the fact that this particular mystery was ruined for me, I appreciated reading all the moments where Hester and the man she fell for were in the same room together because that set me thinking about what was 
was going through their minds, what they were feeling when they were in each other's presence and that was a nice reading experience. So in conclusion I give it a 4 out of 5 because I would have preferred it had I read more about the love that Hester knew that led her to decide that she would bear the shame of her adultery alone and keep her from giving away the identity of the man who sired her baby. As I said earlier, the film was freely adapted from the novel, so there are a lot of differences. First of all, in the movie we do get to see how Hester met the man she falls for, how the two fall in love. So the romantic in me was really happy about that. And the endings are different as well. One of them is a happier ending than the other one. And the main characters are also different as to the protagonist, Hester. I think I prefer her in the book because the evolution she goes through in the novel is really interesting. Whereas in the film, she is always the same. A likable woman, but her nature doesn't change that much through the experiences that she encounters along the plot. Also. In the book, we get to see Hester standing on her two feet. She works to earn her keep. And the villagers who at first condemned her for her adultery end up sort of appreciating her because they see that she isn't that bad only because she succumbed to an affair. Whereas in the movie, she's always scandalizing everyone. There's even this moment in the film where she is almost raped. So I didn't like the fact that they sort of sexualized her in that manner. And I guess that Hester in the movie is more dependent on men because of her love for the man who fathered her baby. But I can't really be upset about the fact that they didn't show her independence the way the novel portrays it because the fact that she keeps shocking everyone in the village because she speaks her mind and follows her ideals is also a manifestation of independence but as to the suffocating society that is portrayed in the story of the Scarlet Letter I prefer it in the film than in the book in the film they go into way more details as to dealings of the Puritans with the Native Americans and the way they dealt with women whom they considered to be witches Whereas in the novel, I think that Nathaniel Hawthorne sort of sort of glosses over what was really happening in the town while the story takes place. As I said at the start of the video, this movie isn't that well loved because it's unfaithful to the book and can't capture the beauty of the story that Nathaniel Hawthorne portrays in his work. But I guess this is sort of a guilty pleasure movie for me because I really like it. I think I prefer watching the movie over reading the book. And I guess that this is because I'm a really big romantic and I prefer to watch how Hester falls in love than just reading the aftermath of it. And also because as I just mentioned, the movie covers a lot more of the historical aspects of life in the middle of the 17th century in Boston. And in this movie they even talked the way people did back then using words like thee and thy. So that was a nice touch and faithful to the book I think. And I guess maybe some people could claim that the movie is the sort of erotic fan fiction of The Scarlet Letter. I don't see it as erotic at all. I think the actors did a good job in pretending they were in love. Whereas in the book it's harder for me to figure it out if Hester was really in love or did they just succumb to a passionate moment. Making their relationship more of a mistake than something they were willing to risk their lives for. And this makes it easier for me to understand the characters motivations and actions and reasonings. And finally, and this will be the only tiny spoiler in the whole video. I think I prefer the 1995 film over the novel because as I said when I was growing up I loved Gary Oldman and also because since, since I've always enjoyed reading or watching stories where men of the cloth fall in love with women seeing Gary Oldman as a minister struggling between his heart and his conscience still brings a smile to my face. So this is the end of the video. I hope you all guys enjoyed learning about the Scarlet Letter. I encourage you to give the book a try and if you do please let me know or maybe you've already read it so I want to hear about that as well. And I would also like it if you told me if you enjoy the story portrayed in the movie more than you do in the book Or maybe you even prefer another adaptation of The Scarlet Letter And I ask you to please recommend it to me And maybe there's even a message that the story leaves you with that I missed So I want to hear about that as well As always in the description box you can find links to the book's Goodreads page And links to the movie's trailer and IMDb page I hope you're all doing great and I'll be seeing you soon I'm Caro the Mental Traveler, goodbye